Some of you may remember this old thing. This is my APC Smart UPS 1500 that I turned into a 1 kilowatt ish uh, 12 volt inverter. Uh, and as you can see, it's since been basically stripped of everything. I've needed a fans for other projects. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna need it for another project where I need a relatively beefy 12 volt inverter. So I've gotten a couple of these uh, thermally controlled uh, Arctic fans and I figured I'd just uh, slap them in there and see uh, if it'll work. Uh, probably in a push configuration. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I know that it had some overheating issues even with the original uh, rather powerful Gentle Typhoon fan so I'm not really certain how these uh, Arctic fans which are considerably weaker are going to fare but uh, it was a shot. I probably don't, won't be taking peak power out of it for a very long time anyway. So it's a bit of a compromise because I need it to run relatively silently. Anyway, let's go. I might beef up the tracks on the board a bit more as well. Yes, yeah, so with the cover off we can see the area of the power transistors here and this is where we had a lot of thermal issues when I was running this thing on full load. And yeah, hindsight is always 2020. I definitely need to beef all of this up considerably more in order for it to handle the 100-ish amps that this thing draws on the full load, so I'm just going to do that using my favourite 2.5 square millimetre copper wire. And there we go, some quite considerably reinforced tracks. Each of those 2.5 square millimeter wires should add about 25 amps of current capability to the track on its own and we get some extra in the large amount of tin I used as well. So this should be quite considerable an improvement over the previous design where we just had one little teensy bit of uh, I believe 1.5 square millimeter wire going down the middle where we've now got dual 2.5 square millimeter wiring. So we've got 50 amps of extra grunt there just from the wiring itself. So I'm quite confident this thing is going to keep up without getting, you know, hot plastic smelly hot anymore and um, risking to melt the plastic top cover. I also added these little rubber mount just to prevent the case from pressing down on this area mostly in order to protect these little jumper wires which uh, if you didn't see the original video on building this thing uh, uh, these wires are in place of a couple of gate resistors I forgot to solder onto the top of a board so the gates of these uh, four transistor pairs are just wired up in parallel whereas uh, the outer uh, eight transistors have individual gate resistors. It doesn't really matter that it's done this way, the single gate resistors are more than adequate for driving dual FETs. And in order to improve the thermals just a bit, I'm going to add another 120 millimeter hole on the opposite side of the inverter from the fans. And who knows, perhaps we'll make the fans in a push-pull configuration. Perhaps that will work better. Oh there we go. Another hole. Let's see right through it. Another modification I'm going to do to this unit prior to reassembling it is add this giant capacitor inside of it because uh, the modification to make it run on 12 volts uh, the original capacitance installed on the board um, about uh, 6,000 microfarads isn't really enough to actually uh, give the juice to build up the field in this dual transformer so the unit has tendency to just uh, reboot a couple of times uh, before you actually manage to power it on unless you have an external capacitor connected up. Uh, in the past when I've been using this thing I've just had a capacitor connected uh, to the Anderson connector on the back sticking out of it and that works excellent but mm, it's not a very tidy solution and uh, this capacitor here just happens to be the perfect form factor to just uh, sit in there. So I'm just going to add that Make a couple of screw holes, wire it up with some relatively thick wire, it's not super critical, and call it a day. 
the specifics on the capacitor are uh, it's a Froco brand probably from like the 1970s 35 volts a uh, 45,000 microfarads so it's very old uh, not very size efficient but it doesn't really matter I, I, I don't think it's gonna blow up that's basically all I care about and there we go Ca capacitor installed I just took a couple of uh, the screw terminals uh, soldered the a couple of uh, used uh, computer power supply wires to them and ran them a discrete route to straight over to the power rails. Uh, so again, this capacitor is just a bolt capacitance to kind of fill in the immediate load when it's starting up. It doesn't really serve any other purpose. It just needs to have a lot of capacitance at reasonably low ESR. And I think these wires are going to do uh, quite okay a job at carrying that. So, all I've got to do is, uh, I guess, uh, mount it back together and uh, perhaps see if it runs. Hey, but before I mount it, uh, I'm going to have to do something about this temperature sensor for these fans. Because as you can see, it's attached permanently to the fan with a wire. And uh, I would have to remove this every time I take off the case. And uh, I want to be able to just disconnect everything. So I'm going to have to add a connector to it. And uh, my solution for that is pretty simple because I'm just going to snag a couple of these 4-pin fan connectors of random fans and a couple of 4-pin fan connectors of this used up old motherboard. And uh, I don't need the tachometer signal so I'm basically just needing uh, 2 pins for power and 2 pins for the uh, NTC. So that'll work out just fine. Very simple. Oh, there we go, there are the finished fan connectors and a little adapter plate to connect everything up. So, all I've done, quite obviously, I connected the thermal sensor lead to two pins, power to another couple of pins, and that's it. This is the same way on both fans, although I have marked up one of them to match them with the original uh, temperature sensor because I don't know if they're in any way calibrated for, for the particular NTC. I wouldn't think so, but better to be on the safe side. The adapter board is very simple, it's uh, just a couple of jumper links. I took uh, two fan connectors obviously and uh, soldered the NTCs to two pins and paralleled up the other couple of pins and that's going to run to the fan power output on the UPS main board. So this is just power and signal really, no smarts whatsoever. And I can plant these thermal sensors wherever I want to without having to take them off every time I want to take the cover of a UPS. And there is the fan control board or fan splitter board installed. It's just zip tied to the case there with the M NTCs uh, sna snaking their way in towards the inner two heat sinks uh, where they'll be tapping off their temperatures. It was quite a bother managing to actually attach the NTCs to the big uh, plate heat sinks down there. But I think I managed and it has a chance of working. I also took uh, the liberty of moving the USB panel board uh, to the front of the unit where it's going to just sit behind the cover until needed because this very wide wire was crossing straight across the uh, airflow of the unit so it wouldn't have been all too good to have that just sitting in the airflow. On the airflow side I've also removed all the uh, air guides I previously had because the airflow is going to go the other direction this time so they wouldn't be doing any good and I've also zip tied a few wires together down here in order to prevent these very fat wires which are attaching to the board right by the edge from actually striking the fan and preventing that from spinning and this should be and keeping them nice and secure and probably do a bit good for uh, just general vibration resistance as well and I've now got fans mounted on the case. Uh, I've left this hole just entirely unpopulated. It's, yeah, we'll see what I do about that. And uh, we're basically ready to put everything together. And so the way this goes on is uh, I can, the fans are obviously disconnected now, but I'll just mount the case as good as I can and then open up the front panel of a unit and uh, connect the fans to the fan controller because that should work quite well. The fans are mounted on rubber grommets and not so much for 
vibration resistance but rather <laughs> because I didn't really drill the holes very straight so it would have kind of twisted the fan frames if I were to maintain them sturdily but I think this is going to go together quite nicely let's give it a try Alright, uh, that means that we should now have fan operation if we try and power this on. So let's give it a go. It's not shorted. Oh, there we go. Fans be spinning. And will this power on? Oh, would you look at that? I haven't broken it. Excellent. Alright, so let's try and hook this up to a battery. Since we've got a 45,000 microfarad cap in the straight across the input, this could be a bit spectacular. Guess not. So there's only one thing left to do. Power it on and give it some torture. It starts up just fine, even on battery power. Oh, we've got eight put. Six hundred and fifty watts. No issues. And what kind of efficiency are we getting? Well, we're drawing seventy-one point two amps at eleven point seven volts. And that's 834 watts in for just about 670 watts out for an efficiency of just over 80%. Now that's quite fine. I do not mind that at all. And if we poke a thermocouple onto one of the power transistors after it's been running for a few minutes, that's just excellent. Now the two hottest heatings are inaccessible when the case is on, but I can tell by just putting my hand in the exhaust of a fan but there's no considerable heat build up in there and uh, previously when you were running this unit under high load you would get a very 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 hot sensation right across here where the undersized traces were even at this kind of two-thirds load so I'm quite confident that this device is going to be more than suitable to provide perhaps even a phase of what's continuously I'm kind of Skeptical, but I think he could do it. Perhaps. So let's put back to the test. Just hooked up a few more light bulbs to load it down just to the brink. I'll see what happens. And uh, this time we're drawing 116 amps at exactly 11 volts for 955 watts of output. Let's see what efficiency we get. And sadly, we seem to have dropped down to. 75-ish percent at this higher load probably due to well obviously due to the higher voltage drops in every part of the inverter sustaining this load it does seem to run a tad warmer than i'd like to see i never these outer heat sinks run considerably cooler than the inner ones so i think i'm gonna cut the test here perhaps it can do it perhaps it can't at this stage i'm happy to just kind of use it as a up to 1000 watt inverter which can do your 1.8 kilowatts peak and that's uh, more than suitable for my purposes. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this little blast from the past. Uh, if anything this unit certainly runs a lot more quietly now that uh, it doesn't have those two screaming uh, gentle typhoons anymore. So with that I say thank you for watching, cheerio.